Congratulate me. I finally found the one girl in the world for me, and we're going to get married. Mm. <laughs> 
Almost a bullseye. Well, Calvin, you have my sympathies. Sympathies? I don't know what's so wrong with marriage. Calvin, it's a sneaky way to do it. These quick weddings. You meet the gal one day, you engage the next. From then on, they're so busy planning the wedding, you can't talk to her. Then the day before the marriage, you can't see her at all. And when you do marry her, she's wearing a veil. <laughs> so what's wrong with all that? Calvin, have you ever gone into a grocery store to buy a honeydew melon? Sure. Well, marriage is just like buying a melon, without the privilege of squeezing it before you take it home. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not worrying about that. With me and Nancy is the real thing. And, Colonel, you are the first one I'm inviting to the wedding. I don't want any part of it. She's a wonderful girl. You can leave me out. She's loaded with money. Calvin, shake hands with your best man. Well, that's generous of you. Of course, the only thing is, Nancy's mater doesn't want her to marry anyone who's after her money. Yeah, that might throw a monkey wrench into the matrimonial machinery. <laughs> Calvin, let me tell you something. You need someone on your side. Someone who has your interest at heart. Someone who is crafty, underhanded, and who would stop at nothing to get their hands on that money. Yeah, but I don't know anyone like that. Calvin, you heard the expression that you can't see the forest for the trees. Well, right now, you are standing in the shade of the biggest weeping willow that ever grew. been talking to a friend of mine, and he's got a great idea. He suggests we elope without telling your mama. Oh, Calvin, if I did that, Mater would disinherit me. Hmm, funny how a great idea can go sour, isn't it? Well, you see, a while ago, I was in love with a boy named Rupert. We were engaged, but he never could put over his big deal, so Mater made us break up. She said that wedding bells will never ring for a man that's penniless. She did, huh? She said I must marry a man who is not after my money. Um, you have money of your own, don't you, Calvin? Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, I just came into some money recently. <laughs> I'm going to consult my financial advisor this afternoon. I think I'm going to turn out to be a lot wealthier than I think I am. Oh, Calvin, you're getting more wonderful every minute. Bye-bye, Calvin. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey. I got a good mind to sue the phone company. due at the hotel at 7? That's right. Colonel, uh, you think uh, meeting Nancy and her mater for dinner is a good idea? Oh, certainly. They'll give us an opportunity to put on the dog. Yeah, but I'm nervous. I'm not too familiar with those high society manners. Now, you just watch the old Colonel, son. I'll show you how to really put on the Ritz. <laughs> I'm putting on the top hat, putting on the shirt, just polishing my nails. I don't understand it, and I'm only half his age. It's 7.30, Colonel. Nancy said she and her mater would meet us here at 7 in the hotel lobby. Wait, Calvin, uh, is that Nancy coming through the door now? Isn't she a dreamboat? <laughs> yeah, but that dreadnought behind her must be her mother. <laughs> Look at that pile of blubber coming across the room. Oh, there you are, 
Calvin. Uh, how did do? <laughs> Colonel Montgomery J. Claxton of Nashville, Tennessee, and former Colonel of the Breckenridge County Zouaves. At your service, ma'am. How do you do? I'm so sorry we're late, but I was stuck between Broadway and North Street. Oh, that's okay, just as long as they pried you loose. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Nothing, nothing at all. Uh, now, my dears, uh, let us sojourn into the salon and partake of some of our gastronomic delights. Yeah, let's get in there and tie on the feedback. Uh, Nancy, uh, may I take you on? Why, thank you, Colonel. Calvin. Uh, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mayor, uh, may I take your arm? Here's my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mater, you better take mine. I wouldn't want to strain my innards before I tangle with the grub. Ah, bonsoir, monsieur. Uh, may I help you, please? Uh, the Calvin Burnside, 44. Uh, oui, monsieur. Uh, ride this way, please. <laughs> ah, voilà. There you are. Your waiter will be with you in one moment. Uh, Nancy, you sit here. I will sit beside you, and uh, Mida, you sit across from me. <laughs> You'd better drag over three more chairs. As you see, monsieur. And dear, tell the waiter to hurry it up. I'm sorry. Oui, madame. Colonel, I understand you are Mr. Burnside's financial advisor. Well, I do operate behind the scenes. And Mr. Burnside, you must be very wealthy to have someone just to look after your money. Oh, yeah, when it comes to being filthy rich, I guess I'm just about as dirty as anyone. Well, Nancy, Mr. Burnside is quite different from that penniless Rupert fellow you were going with. No, Mater. Yes, sir, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Burnside had a big year last year. Of course, when it comes to stocks, he concentrated on metals. And while the steels were good, he did have a little trouble with the coppers. Yeah, they had me down to the station house three or four times. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to excuse Mr. Burnside. Ever since he got his head caught in the bank vault door, he refers to the New York Stock Exchange as the station house. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, there's the music. Uh, would you care to dance, Nancy? No, I'd love to, Colonel. Calvin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mater, would you care to get up and waddle the light fantastic with me? I'd love to. <laughs> Hmm, I guess the goon squad didn't wait up for me this evening. <laughs> I guess you're wide awake. Well, good evening, my two charming creatures. Never mind that, Montgomery. Where have you been to this hour of the night? I have been assisting the blue bird of happiness to build a little love nest in the hearts of two of my dearest friends. What do you mean by that? I've been trying to help Calvin marry a young chick so we can move in on her mama's loot. You mean he's going through with this crazy idea of marrying that rich gal? Sure. We've been at a swanky restaurant trying to impress her and her fat mama. <laughs> you sure you haven't been out with some hussy yourself? Oh, no, sister dear. You know I'll always be true to Maggie Bell. When a person has lamb chops in the icebox, he don't go out looking for pot roast. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. We're going to bed. Good night, Mount Gumrey. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, Sister Sue. <laughs> now, what was that for? I missed you when you came in. I'm just trying to correct my hook. <laughs> Oh, Nancy, this is wonderful news. Your 
Mater says you can marry me, huh? Yes, she was so impressed with you last night. Someone who isn't interested in me for my money. Someone of your financial standing. Ha, ha, ha. I'm pretty rich sitting down, too. If Rupert only had the money you have. If he had put over that big deal, Calvin, it would have been Rupert instead of you. Yeah, that's too bad about Rupert, but when will you and I be sniffing the orange blossoms? <laughs> well, of course, Calvin, with all the money you have, I I know you want us to have our own little dream cottage. Uh, dream cottage? Well, now, wait a minute. Yes, Calvin, and I've had the place in mind for a long while. It's out on the parkway, and, Calvin, it's only $12,000. $12,000? Yes, Calvin, and the day you buy it, the wedding bells will ring. Hmm. I never figured it would take $12,000 to make me a ding-dong daddy. <laughs> Yes, sir, Mr. Meekle. Uh, that's the information I wanted. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we understand. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Well, Calvin, that was Mr. Meekle that built the house Nancy wants out on the parkway. Yeah? Yes, sir. He wants $12,000 for the house. He says he needs the money badly, but he is willing to take $5,000 down payment. Oh, my. Where in the world are we going to get $5,000? And if we don't, Nancy won't marry me, and I'll miss out on all that money. After all, Rupert missed out because he didn't have any money. Now, Calvin, we've got brains. There must be a way. If we just put on our thinking caps... Uh -huh. I just had a hot flash. <laughs> Calvin, my brain is really on fire. We'll go to the bank and real estate loan. Yeah, a real estate loan. That's a good idea. Then, Calvin, you can buy the house and marry Nancy. Yes, sir. Colonel, you are really cooking. <laughs> I don't know when I've had such a hot idea. <laughs> Come on, let's go down to the bank while I'm all steamed up. <laughs> $5,000. Please do come in. Have a seat, gentlemen. Prompt courteous service is our motto. Now, just what do you want to borrow this money on? A uh, $12,000 house. Well, if you have a house valued at $12,000, we should be able to loan you $5,000 with no trouble. Now you're talking. And what are you going to use this $5,000 for? to buy the house with. Now, just a moment. Do I understand that you want to borrow the money on a house that you don't even own? Oh, no, sir. You don't understand. We want to borrow money on a house we're going to own. I'm one of the newer men here. Perhaps Mr. Bertram can help us. Oh, Mr. Bertram? Yes, Abinadis? These two gentlemen wish to borrow $5,000 to buy a house. Yes. And they want to put up the house as collateral for the loan. Very good. But they don't own the house. Oh. Well, you've got to have the money to buy the house before you can borrow money on the house. Yes, sir, but you have to loan us the money before we can have the money to buy the house to borrow the money on the house. Uh, Mr. Kubala, could you come here for a moment? Yes, <laughs> madam what can I do for you? Mr. Abernathy and I have tried to explain to these two gentlemen why we can't loan them $5,000 to buy a $12,000 house to borrow money on till they have the money to buy the house. Well, now, it's really very simple, isn't it? I'm glad to hear that. Uh, number one, you need $12,000 to buy the house. Well, all we're asking for is five. Yes, sir. I've already saved the bank $7,000. Uh, look, you want to borrow $5,000, but first you need $12,000 to buy the house. You talked us into it. Give us the $12,000. No. Uh, something wrong? Yeah. Abernathy, ask Mr. Doozy if he would please help us. Oh, Mr. Doozy, could you help us a moment, sir? 
gentlemen, Mr. Doozy is the president of the bank. G.A. Doozy, at your service, gentlemen. <laughs> well, sir, we desire to borrow $5,000. $5,000 on a $12,000 house. Fine collateral. But, Mr. Doozy, they don't own the house. What they really need is $12,000. But all we are asking for is five, which saves the bank seven. Excellent. I'll write you an okay for a cashier's check. Make it out to Calvin Burnside. But, Mr. Doozy... Gentlemen, any time my bank can save $7,000 on one deal... Oops! Uh, what's the matter, Mr. Doozy? Gentlemen, I've worked for 18 years to establish this bank. I carefully selected my most worthy associates. And now, Mr. Burnside, after talking to you for just five minutes, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm taking my whole hand-picked staff and going back into the used car business. Come, <laughs> gentlemen. How do you like that, Colonel? Come on, Calvin, we can take a hint. Let's take our business elsewhere. What are we going to do now, Colonel? We can't give up. I'll go home and get Maggie Bell's pearl necklace and hock it. You sell your automobile. I'll hock Sister Sue's mink coat. You cash in your annuity. And we ought to have the $5,000. Colonel, you're a financial wizard. We should never have gone to that bank in the first place. You're right, Calvin. We showed them how they could save $7,000, and they treated us like a couple of bums. Come on, Calvin, let's go before the hock shop's closed. $4,995, There you are, Mr. Miku. The $5,000 down payment. Fine. And here's the deed to the house. You understand? It's $100 a month until the balance is paid. Oh, we understand. Oh, yes. I'm in the real estate business myself, you know. Huh. Well, I'm glad we could make a deal. I've had this house for sale for six months. It's been a very important sale for me. Yes, sir. It's been important to us, too, Mr. Meekle. Well, good day, gentlemen. Good day. Goodbye. Well, now, Kelvin, we have the house. This will satisfy Nancy and her mater. Yeah, and tomorrow those wedding bells are going to ring. Oh, my darling, at last we're married. It was wonderful how you got that $5,000 for the house. Yes, Mrs. Rupert Meekle, and I wouldn't have gotten it if you hadn't maneuvered that poor sap Calvin Burnside into buying that house of mine. Burnside, where'd I come here up for breakfast before noon? I got a bad case of insomnia. Uh, could I have a piece of toast, please, Sister Sue? Tell me, Montgomery, how's Calvin's romance coming along? Yeah, yeah. I thought his marriage to that rich gal was all crap. Uh, ladies, uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss weddings right now. For some reason, the whole subject of matrimony gives me shooting pains in my head this morning. Well, I don't think it's nice for you to say that about marriage when you're sitting right across from your wife. Yeah. I don't like the way you're acting this morning at all. Uh, why don't you lovely ladies be sweet and nice to me? And let me have another piece of toast. I'll be happy to. Won't you, Sister Sue? You see, my needs are simple. Ready. All I want to have Aim. is quiet. <laughs> a chance to enjoy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 